Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing an overview and demonstration of this vintage uh, Halon fire suppression system piece. This is a Firelight Alarms model HRA-10 uh, and this is referred to in some of the documentation as a master control station uh, for the Halon fire suppression system. Essentially what you see here is what looks to be a Firelight BG-10. This of course has the Halon to release fire extinguishing agent print on it um, and they've designated that as the model uh, HR-10, I believe. Um, and that's the model designation for this pull station on its own. Um, what you see behind it here, this is a metal faceplate that contains a couple LEDs and a button and then there's a back box that contains this whole assembly together. This is a pretty simple device. Um, after I do a quick demonstration the first time just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to go a little bit into how this thing is actually wired up behind the scenes in that back box because it might not be exactly what you're expecting just from looking at it. Um, if we use my Allen wrench here just as a pointer, you can see we have a power on LED. This is currently lit as I am feeding uh, constant 24 volts DC um, into the device here. We have the system operated LED. This will actually come on when we activate this pull station. So you'll see that light up in red. Then below it here, we have the abort button. It says to abort hold in. These are used on fire suppression systems to temporarily uh, hold off on releasing the fire suppression uh, agent. And that could be used uh, either in the case of an accidental activation or if uh, you know perhaps somebody pulled the pull station and then realize that their buddy was still in the room trying to grab something out last minute. Well, they could hold that button in and make sure that nothing actually releases for uh, another minute or so. This button on this station actually doesn't do much for us. Um, when I get into a little bit of the description on how this thing is wired up, this essentially sends a signal back to the panel. Um, it really doesn't have any impact on what you see here um, when it operates. I believe that there might be a couple configurations with different firelight panels this was used with that uh, might blink this system operated LED or something like that. I didn't implement this um, for this particular demonstration just because I wasn't able to find any documentation showing that that's actually something you would have seen. Uh, but in any case, let's do a quick demo of what this looks like when you pull the station um, and then we'll dive into a little bit more of a explanation of the wiring and then I'll go ahead and demo it again and kind of talk through what you're seeing once we know a little bit more about how this thing is wired behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and pull this. You can see that we now have the system operated LED illuminated. Um, like I said this abort button really isn't going to do anything for us here. Um, and then since we're just demonstrating this uh, station on its own. I didn't have it connected to any other devices that are going to activate or anything like that. So we can go ahead and reset this pull station. This one has the infamous screw lock on the front of it versus the uh, L series of BG10 devices that have the key lock and are slightly less susceptible to the uh, problem of over tightening this screw and damaging the housing. So let's lock that back up. You can see once I tightened it to a certain extent to hold that switch back in, we've extinguished the system Oops. Uh, LED there. So now what we'll do is we'll take a quick look at how this thing is actually connected up, explain that, and we'll go ahead and do another demonstration after that. All right. So now what I've done is I've pulled up another one of these units alongside the first one. This one just doesn't have the back box on it. Um, and so we can go through and kind of take a look at what all this in here does. So you can see down here, using my Allen key as a pointer, this is the terminal block for the switch on the, uh, the uh, pull station portion of the device. Up here you see the back of the abort switch, and then you see some of the connections for the LEDs up here. So if we kind of go step by step through what all of these do, this one green wire here, um, if you see a data sheet for these, it'll be labeled as the, uh, the C lead. 
This is the connection for the constant 24 volts DC supply into the station. So this is actually supplying power to both of the LEDs directly. How these LEDs are switched on and off is actually through their ground or common connections. So if we look at this wire here, you can see this is connected to one side of the terminal block here for the pull station. This is lead A in the data sheet. This lead is the uh, common ground lead for the entire device. So I just have this connected here and then inside of here, right on this screw terminal, I have this connected to the ground on my 24 volt power supply. So this is supplying our ground or common connection through this station. This lead you see right here, which is labeled B in the data sheet, this is the common or ground connection for our red system operated LED. And so what you're seeing here is I have this connected to the other side of this terminal block for the pull station switch. Now I'll caution you that this probably isn't how we would wire it up in an actual control panel. We'd have some sort of a separate contact or in a more modern system, an open collector input here um, that would allow the panel to switch this connection to ground on and off and activate this LED. Uh, but since we're just doing a pretty simple demonstration here and I didn't really need this, this switch to uh, activate anything else, you know, we don't have this connected to any other devices, I'm just using this to toggle this LED on and off directly. Now this other lead you see here, this lead D in the data sheet, this is connected to the back of the abort switch. The abort switch is actually connected to this common ground node here. And so all you're doing when you activate this switch is you're connecting this lead to ground. So again, you'd connect this to a circuit in the panel that's able to detect that that connection has been made and that would activate your uh, abort sequence on your fire suppression control panel. Um, so then, like I mentioned, we'll go ahead and demo this unit again uh, now that we know what we know about how this is connected together. So when I go ahead and activate the switch on the pulse station, uh, like I mentioned, we're basically already ready to go with 24 volts being supplied to these LEDs. We're not switching the uh, positive side of the supply on or off at all. We're just controlling whether or not these LEDs are able to access the ground connection to complete the circuit. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see, as we'd expect, the LED illuminates again. And then we can go ahead and reset this and close that circuit connection once more. Hopefully I can do that without dropping my own wrench this time and making a big clanging noise for you guys. So. Also mentioned this is for a uh, screw operated BG10. This is probably one of the uh, stiffer ones I've dealt with. Most of them aren't this hard to open. Let's close that back up. You can see that that LED has extinguished again. So, alrighty. So that's all, all about uh, what I have to show you here. Now, if you guys are interested in owning any of the devices used here for our demonstration, um, stay tuned for a little tidbit at the end of this video, and uh, I'll talk some of that over. Okay, so in addition to the main device that we demonstrated during uh, this little demo here, um, I was lucky enough to acquire quite a few of these devices. Um, and I've decided to make some of these available to you guys. So if you'd be interested in owning any of the devices we used uh, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be keeping the, the main one we used here. But I'll put some links below in the description and so you can check those out. In any case, I uh, hope you guys learned a little bit of something about uh, how this station works. Uh, I was certainly surprised to see how everything actually connected together in there. Um, not super complicated or anything special, but just not not exactly what I expected. So that's why I kind of wanted to show you guys what's back there. Uh, but in any case, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.